Hey holy sisters, it's Neely coming to you from my escape spot in Jerusalem with my gray hair and my no makeup, Corona style, just coming to you real as it is. And I just want to share a message. Oh, first I'll show you how beautiful this is. I want to share a message about Shvi'i Shel Pesach, which is the last day of Passover. Do you see how gorgeous this is? Ah, oh, thank you God. I seriously don't know what I would do without escaping to this spot every day. Um, okay, so Shvi'i Shel Pesach, last day of Passover. What am I supposed to be thinking? What am I supposed to be feeling? Like what's actually happening? Okay, so a lot of people think that when we went to our Seder with our family, that that's the time we left Egypt, but it's not true. What was happening historically during the Seder? We were having Seder in Egypt with our families, sitting in our homes. We were still there. We didn't leave yet. Granted, we were roasting the Paschal lamb, which was really spiritually significant because it was saying that we were ready to get rid of all falsehood in our lives, right? Any false gods. Um, but what's happening now? Why is the last day of Passover a holiday? Why is it called a Chag? So it's like this. The last day of Passover, which we're coming into tonight, and we're going to be celebrating tomorrow specifically at the time the sun is setting, that was the time that we went through the sea. Ah, that's so awesome, right? Or if you watch the Prince of Egypt, Ashira la Shem ki goga. Right, we're going through the sea. It's so cool. So that's cool, right? It's actually so cool that historically we know when we went through the sea. But what's even more amazing about it is the spiritual significance and the lesson in it for us. So what is that lesson? So like this. Okay, so there we are. We got out of Egypt. The Egyptians are chasing us. There's mountains on either side. You can imagine them like the mountains of Elad if anyone's been there. That's actually the, the topography. Like That actually was where it was, right? And, um, <laughs> and, um, and the sea is in front of us. And we didn't have 2020 vision. Oh, how cute, 2020. We didn't know the sea was gonna split. We're just standing there in fear, thinking, okay, Hashem, you've brought us into a crazy obstacle in our lives, and now there's no hope. We're stuck, right? And a lot of us in our lives feel like there's no hope. We're stuck. What are we gonna do? And with enough prayer and enough faith, God has said, okay, we're gonna, you're gonna get out. How are we gonna get out of our own Egypt? Well, listen to this. So the sea actually historically didn't agree to split we're standing there we're in danger and also Hashem brought like crazy wild animals like it was a scary time and in the sea was like I'm not splitting for these people and God's like what do you mean that was our covenant that was our pact I created you in the seven days of creation dear sea so that the time that the Jews would come out of Egypt that you would be there to split for them you would help them get out of Egypt like what the heck is wrong with you I am your God I'm commanding you to split what are you doing why are you not splitting And the seas like I did not agree to split for these people these people are like they've messed up and they've done bad things and they've gossiped and they've been moral like ugh talking about us right it's like I'm not gonna let these people go says our Pharaoh says our sea and then and then the sea saw coming through the crowds of the Israelites the coffin of Yosef so who's Yosef okay Yosef was the guy <laughs> the guy Yosef is Yaakov's son the favored son who was in Egypt and got hired by Potiphar and his wife to serve them after he gets out of jail now here's the thing Potiphar Potiphar's wife is like Ahari. She is like, woo, gorgeous. And she was actually trying to seduce Yosef. And every day she would change lingerie. I mean, seriously, what guy could survive two years of the hottest chick in Egypt in her like metal ironclad lingerie? Like, who could resist such a thing? Well, Yosef did. He really resisted one of the biggest temptations in the world. And he did this day after day after day until one day she got him. She cornered him, she got him naked, they're there she's ready they're about to commit the act which would have god forbid been adultery and in that moment yosef saw a reflection of himself or some say he saw a reflection of his father yaakov and he said this isn't i i can do but i i can persevere i can get through this this isn't my destiny right like if he would end up sleeping with her and they'd have children what's he gonna say to his kids that's not who he was his highest self was way better than that right so in that moment, Yosef resists and he digs his nails into the ground and says, it says in the Midrash that all of that energy of resistance, it went into the earth and it was saved to the day was going to be, that the, that the waters were going to be split. And when the sea saw the bones of Yosef approaching, it said, oh, oh, these are, these are the people here? Aha, for this man who changed his nature and went against his temptations, and stood up for his higher self. 
if this man changed his nature, I'll change my nature too. You see, the nature of water is to come together, right? Like even scientifically, if you put a drop of water in a drop of water, it'll unite. Water's nature is to come together. Even the word water, mayim, right? It's plural, it's not even singular. The nature of water is to be together as one. And so the sea said, if this man will change his nature to serve God, so too will I change my nature to serve God as well. And in that moment, it agreed to change its nature and to split. And so the powerful significance of the splitting of the sea and going through Yamsuf, there's many, but one of them is that place where I say, this is my nature, this is who I am, this is the nature of our family, this is the nature of my relationship with my daughter and my son, this is my relationship with my husband, it's not gonna change, there's no hope, there's no way out, I'm stuck. And in the splitting of the sea it says, oh no, no, girl, you got this, you got this, you, anything could change. With enough hope and enough prayer and enough dedication, it's a daily practice, it's not, you know, the miracle is that the sea split, but the miracle doesn't have to be that it happens overnight. The miracle is, do I have enough hope and faith to know that anything about me can change, anything about my relationships can change, anything about my family dynamic, about my career, about whatever I think is stuck. Uh, it's not stuck. And at the least, we can pray our hearts out. At the least, we can know that it happened in history once, and it can happen again for us too. So I just want to wish you a Chag Sameach. And I bless you to really mentally go into the splitting of the sea to that place historically where I thought, I'm stuck, it's over, there's no hope. And to, to, to be like the sea and be like Yosef and say, you know what, Hashem, maybe this isn't my nature. Maybe my nature is to rise above. And uh, I know that everybody is doing their best already. My friend calls all the moms now, she calls them mom shiach, right? Not ma shiach, but mom shiach. So I bless all you mom shiachs and all of us that are just with ourselves and going through this also. I bless us uh, to really have a beautiful Chag Sameach and to retune into hope and faith for yourself, for your family, and for the world. Much love.